they did this to you. They're trying to turn us against each other. Just look at them. What do they know about friendship anyway? I'll get them. You watch. I'll take care of those sons of bitches. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Oh, good Lord. It's... It's unbelievable. It's... It's horrible. I can't understand the reason for such cruelty. It must have something to do with some obscure sexual writer. With the almost profound respect... These... Getting very careless. Blood in your hair. What will we do? You want to look pretty, don't you? Pretty for me. I can't believe you're not afraid. All you have to do is piss on it. Could he care blood, ain't you? God damn it, Ralph, get out of here. Go on, get. Leave people alone. You'll never come back again. Oh, shut up, Ralph. It's got a death curse. Evil. God, my leg. God, my leg. I'm here. You're here. There's a fog bank out there. Messenger of God. You're doomed if you stay here. Demanding everything, including blood. John, I want this material burned. All of it. In hell! I'd have mercy on his soul. He was one ruthless son of a bitch. Wendy, stay away! Darling, light of my life. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. I'm gonna bash him right the fuck in. <laughs> well, Dad, are you proud of me now? Do I measure up? Huh? My son, my son was a son of a bitch, and he was no good. That's it, my son is dead. I don't want to talk about him no more. Oh, Cindy. Oh, Cindy. You're gonna die. Major Lacrimaro. Ma'am. Major Tenebrano. We didn't find any boy. Major Suspirio. You know as well as I do, he takes all kinds of critters to, to make, make farmer Vincent and fritters. <laughs> I wonder who the real cannibals are. All right, uh, we're in for another 1980 flick. And this time I'm with James L. Edwards, actor, uh, director. You've done three features now. And Mm -hmm. uh, her name was Krista was the first one. What were the other two? Brimstone Incorporated and the new one coming out is an anthology, right? Uh, No, actually, it is a revenge horror film called uh, Trivial. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's Mm -hmm. it. I mixed up the Brimstone was the anthology. No, no, you're fine. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, um, when I first interviewed you for the channel, we talked a lot about Hell of the Living Dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, And I said, uh, maybe have you come on and review the movie. So I'm going through 1980. I've already covered this on my channel before. And I was like, well, I want to spice it up and have people come in and talk about movies I've already covered for 1980. And I thought of you because I know you enjoy (laughs) the Bruno Mattei classic. I absolutely do. It it is a constant uh, running neck and neck for my favorite guilty pleasure next to pieces. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely, uh, definitely highly regarded. So, so, you know, I want to start this off with, uh, we're just going to go, I, it's going to be kind of free when, whatever we want oh, to yeah. do. So, mm-hmm. thinking, you know, you always hear people say, Troll 2 is the best, worst movie ever. It's like, it's not even fucking close. No, I mean, no. Hell's I mean, what it comes down to is, Troll 2 is amusing as a first time watch. I, I know, I know that, yeah. I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off by saying that, but Troll 2 is like, wow, this movie really sucks. There's no rewatchability in Troll 2, though, is the problem. 
what Bruno Mattei did with Hell of the Living Dead or Night of the Zombies or Virus or whatever the hell you want to call zombie it. Creeping flesh zombie, zombie Creeping Flesh. Zombie Creeping Flesh, yeah. Um, I, I, he made a movie that is so impossibly incompetent that you can't take... I mean, you, you find something new every single time you watch it. And another thing I really love about it is it's... It's like you always hear the the Fergazzo stories because he would help write him and his wife. Right. His wife would help write or his partner, and then they'd give it to Bruno, and he'd be like, "I want it more like this." It's like you can't just lift directly; you have to fucking make it different. And then he would just do whatever he wants. Right, but right. Funny- and it's ama- I'm amazed. I, I don't quite. I mean, I don't know a, a huge amount of the backstory. I'm amazed that at some point Matei didn't get sued by somebody. I agree, and, and it, last- it's like. Costellari got sued for Last Shark. How the fuck did right. Cruel Jaws? Did no one watch Cruel Jaws? Yeah, I mean, there's there's literally scenes lifted. Not to, I'm not even talking just oh that's similar. I mean, there's actual footage in uh, uh, in Cruel Jaws from Jaws two two and three. It's like how yeah. the hell did he get away with that? He, he lifted the stuff from Last Shark, I think, which lifted those scenes. So he's lifting from a lift. Right, right. It's just like and the, the thing that I'm the thing that I was always fascinated with with Matei also, and this was I mean, let's call a spade a spade here. Not all of Matei's films were even close to watchable. Okay, yeah. you would always find something somewhat interesting, but there he made very few films like Hell of the Living Dead where it's like I can't. It's like watching a train wreck. You can't take your eyes away from I, it. I think Hell of the Living Dead had some money. Like I, I think it took a while before like people stopped giving money to like Bruno Mattei and Just Franco. And, and like right. I love a lot of Just Franco's movies. So when they had money, they made very entertaining and oh, Franco absolutely made some really great movies. But when they like started taking the money away, they didn't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. they're still making they just go to philippines or something like bruno Mattei. i mean like, you watch something like cannibal holocaust the beginning oh my or, god uh, it's like you can tell it's like okay we're not even trying to pretend that we're not ripping anything off at this point we're just basically going to shoot a scene for scene remake of something poorly done and if we get sued hey let them find us you know? exactly. yeah bring it on and it's just funny that the history this movie's cover art i don't know what one came first I doubt it was Night of the Zombies cover no. up, but it mm-hmm. looks just like fucking Gates of Hell and Burial Ground. All three of them are like, let's just get this fucking, two of them are almost identical to the same zombie, but all three of them are the yeah. same with just this half rotted zombie's face. I'm oh yeah. Cover. I mean, if you hold them up side by side, they are, it is the exact, the exact same artwork, which is fitting considering that the soundtrack is just Dawn of the Dead of and course. Contamination. A half of the movie is stock footage. Exactly. It's like. Of animals that aren't even in that location. Well, that's the thing. It, it's just, again, I, I bring up the fact that it's it's total filmmaking incompetence where you can just tell he's just, after the movie was shot, he's just sitting going, I don't give a shit what's in there. Just put something in there. One of my favorite things about it is, because it's obviously a riff on Dawn of the Dead, right? Right. But if you watch the opening of Dawn of the Dead, like it has the amazing priest, and let the dead walks in your right, but you have the terrorist here. Like right. in the beginning mm-hmm. of Dawn of the Dead, you genuinely feel bad. You're supposed to have sympathy for the tenants of the apartment complex right. and some of the SWAT guys. Um, some of them, you know, it's just a fucked up chaotic situation. Here, it's like Bruno Mattei watched this. He used terrorists and like the terrorists are eco-terrorists. So like, and they're right. They're actually right about this thing coming. Right. But it's like he completely was the void of understanding Dawn of the Dead's opening about like the the conflict and then the somewhat sympathy and just the, the intricate details about it. And he's just like, well, these SWAT guys just go in. Even when they have the people like without their weapons, they still just kill them. Why? Because they're fucking vicious monsters. <laughs> and he just well, not, not even get it. Like, well, not even to, not even to mention the fact that these are supposed to be hardcore trained SWAT team members. So why is it that Half the time, or the, literally 98% of the time when they're going through, they're just blasting through these eco-terrorists. But the one where, uh, the one scene where, I forget the uh, the SWAT guy, but he's like motioning to the Santaro. longer guy. Hey, Santaro. Santaro. Santaro, yeah. Hey, there's a guy down there. And it's like, okay, well, you've had no problem shooting all these other guys. What are you freaking out about this guy? <laughs> because Santaro only freaks out. <laughs> right. Also the best actor in the movie. He's in a bunch of shit. And he's actually... Yeah. He's like the uh, he's like another actor that I Luciano Rossi is another Italian actor. Mm-hmm. It's just like we need somebody who's insane. 
and they just throw one of those two guys in there and they're just like wide eyed, like fucking. We couldn't get Klaus Kinski, but we got the Zantaro from fucking Hell right, Living exactly, Death or somebody like that. Or, or what's that other guy who they call basically the Italian Peter Lorre, uh, Pizgati or whatever his right, fucking yeah. name is? He's mm-hmm. never an Italian movie, but I know we're like giving this movie a hard time, but genuinely, it's one of the most entertaining zombie movies ever. Oh, yeah, and it's I mean, not just because I would... of the badness either, it's got good special effects for a low budget. It's it's a lot of fun. It's 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 an amazing drinking game movie. It, whether I mean, because there's a million different variants you can use. One of the things that I love about it the most is you essentially have a movie that's blatantly ripping off Dawn of the Dead until it gets bored with it and starts ripping off Cannibal Holocaust and all the other Italian uh, cannibal films. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just it doesn't know where it wants to go, and I think that's part of the fun of the ride. For sure. Um... <sighs> My favorite, this, the scenes that always crack me up are, are the, the dubbing. The, the worst, um, the biggest cr- dubbing crime in here is definitely when they go to like the United Nations and like oh, every yeah. African American, they wouldn't be African American, but all the uh, the black characters are just the most poorly dubbed. The, you have two different ones that come to mind where he's like, I see the buddies must be cremated. Him, right. and then the one guy who has like the big speech, and it's actually not horribly written. It's just, he's so poorly dubbed. and it's You can't just, take it seriously at all. Yeah. It's like watching- like, you. Have destroyed my people. It's like who dubbed this? Lucio Fulci? I don't fucking know. I re- the closest I can say to that is it reminds me of the days where um, uh, a lot. Uh, ch- uh, ch- if I'm not mistaken, China was ruled over um, in the in the 80s when China was ruled uh, semi ruled over um, uh, 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 over in- uh, England. So all of Jackie Chan's films, Jackie had an English ac- or like a, a British accent. Are you talking about when uh, Hong Kong uh, was Hong Kong? By- Hong Kong, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just yeah. like it's it, it, it's like you can have an incredibly well thought out scene, but if it's if the dubbing is that piss poor, you can't take it seriously. Like, do you think Claudio Fergazzo was like fuck? And then Bruno Mattei's like, it's great, it's great, and he's just like, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I feel like. Because I actually genuinely like, like, uh, Claudio Forgazzo has some more movies, and I, I actually dig them. Like, Zombie 4 is a lot of fun to me, and, like, like I guess they're technically bad in a lot of places. This one I only, like, hold up on the bad things because it's such a shameless ripoff that you're just, right. like, I can't believe they fucking got away with it. I, and with the See, I'll go of- a little further than that. I, I really will in the sense that, yes, it is a shameless ripoff. But the uh, the real problem with the film itself, and it's it, to me, it actually is a good thing. But to, to your average viewer yeah. to watch it, it has no. It, it's this basic journey with these SWAT team members and this journalist trying to get to the Hope One Center. Yeah. Okay. But in between, there's these sequences that make no sense whatsoever. Like literally, it's like okay, we're uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go through the jungle. And we're going to check with the cannibals and see what's going on with them. And then after we leave there, we're going to end up um, in this house in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the jungle. And yeah, there's zombies outside, but I think I want to wear a tutu and do a musical act. He had no choice. <laughs> yeah. And, and and then we're going to get on a boat. And it's like it just it has no clue what it wants to be. Yeah, I, wasn't the original script? Wasn't there supposed to be like a big ship they were supposed to get on or something like that? And I believe I feel, so. Yeah, yeah. I, um, but you got to keep in mind. I mean, there were, uh, from what I understand, and again, I could be wrong on this because you hear this a lot about, uh, especially zombie films uh, of the eighties. Yeah, was from what, if I'm not mistaken, what Bruno Bonte claimed was his whole rationale for making Night of the Zombies was. He, this was his warning about the AIDS virus in 1980. And it, yeah, and I'm like, that's a pretty, that's that's a pretty. I uh, mean, it doesn't. I mean, cruising from 1980 would be a little bit, you know, yeah, I, that, that I would and, get, yeah, and, and a much better movie is cruising, obviously. Right. But I mean, I guess the virus and everything, but it's an eco message in here. But I, yeah. I, so <laughs> I still don't even, I've watched this movie 20 times. I still don't know what the fuck happened. Like, so they had, were they making a virus? Like from what I, from what I can ascertain from way too many viewings of this movie, it was uh, essentially uh, project sweet death was supposed to be what a great name. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck uh, names pro- project pro- sweet death? 
<laughs> Project Sweet Death was supposed to be a chemical warfare weapon. Okay. That due to a rat getting loose in the most sterile sector of the building. <laughs> it's the most sterile. Um, yeah. He's just like... And, I do love that scene too, especially where it's like these uh, uh, these readings are off the charts. It's like, and you can obviously <laughs> see him turning the dial and, and to make. The, it's like, yeah, the readings wouldn't be off the chart if you just stopped touching the thing. And the dialogue is the best too. He's like, she's got a great ass. He's like, I'm more of a tit man myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm a tit man myself. Classic, <laughs> classic American speaking. It's perfect. Um, that whole part, and it's just like, how are those suits gonna protect you if a rat can crawl underneath the fucking thing? Right. It's just, it's amazing. And the thing that cracks me up too is the fact that um, <clears throat> I love the fact that throughout the movie, we've got a ton of gore. And once they reach the cannibal section, it's like, what is this movie missing? What did we not, what step did we not hit? And it's like, oh, tits. And immediately without warning. Yep. <laughs> And thank goodness she brought her uh, her tribal paint kit too. Oh yeah, to... I mean she looks like fucking uh, Peter Chris from Kiss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For what they like, do it like this. That we can't have her dressed like Kiss. We're gonna get sued. And they actually would sue you. Kiss yeah, might be exactly. the only ones that actually sue Bruno Mattei. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's like a, it's a blast though. It never stops. And to give it credit they do use contamination music and uh, dawn of the dead music because they wanted goblin they didn't want to pay for him to make a score so they just bought the other stuff but there is right. a more there's another score in there by somebody else really yeah like I'm that's not and, and they use it for like stinger some music it's actually really good too so mm. like that that is good like it, it's strange like in just like looking at the filmography of Bruno Mattei, like I always, when I was young, I was like, this is his first movie. I just, no, the dude fucking was directing from 1970. Before that, he was in the sixties as an editor. So oh, yeah. like, it's, it's hard to like even register. Like you're just like, well, he did this and then rats and then the other hell. I remember the other hell, but like he has so many fucking movies that I completely forgot he did. It's just, like I said, I mean, it's, it's a movie that I have no problem putting on at any moment. I just, I, I love the movie. And I can't say that for a lot of his films. There are a lot of them that are fun. Yeah. But nothing that has that amount of rewatchability. Yeah, for sure. Like, we're doing a top 25 because 1980 is such a strong year. It's not mm -hmm. like a typical year. Like, you know what I mean, like, if you made a top 10, you'd be missing, like, there'd be so many classics that didn't make your list. So, like, this is, this is going to make my top 25. I oh, don't yeah, think easily. I can go top 10. I don't think no, I can go top no. 10. I mean, when you're like, being like, yeah, Hell of the Living Dead's better than The Shining. It's like, okay. <laughs> like, even as a favorite, it's not a best list, favorite list. It's just like, I think that you need your head examined, maybe. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although, I mean? sadly enough, I will say that I probably watch Hell of the Living Dead much, much more than I watch The Shining. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, that. Uh, Shining almost is kind of like a mood piece, too. I don't think you right. can just be like, mm -hmm. let's pop in The Shining for some fun, like, you know, Friday night, like, relaxing. Sit down with the wife and then, you know, like, right <laughs> looking at you being a killer <laughs> but uh no i mean like as far as the uh characters and the acting is concerned um most of them suck yeah um, oh yeah Zantaro's great and uh i, I the, the lead female she's in uh the last hunter it's yeah the only other mm -hmm. thing i read i had to look her up she had done a couple so of other italian me, but yeah she had done a couple of other but i mean realistically the only thing that i'd ever actually seen her in was the last hunter? And it's just a bit role in the last hunter too. Yeah, thing, yeah. I know. mean, she's she's the red herring, if I'm not mistaken. She's so. the the flashback girl, Carol. Right. And then yeah, mm -hmm. she comes in together at the end. So like, I mean, she's fine, I guess. Um, I guess the acting is really hard to judge because the dubbing's so poorly. Some done sometimes, like it, dubbing and stuff. You you can still tell if it's a good performance, but like when the one guy is literally holding the door and his accent changes to an Irish thing, he's like, I got the old my God. You're like, what the right? Fuck? Like, yeah, what? it's. <laughs> It's you can tell that, like I said, much like the I have to assume the script and the shooting of the film, they just were basically throwing everything at it and just seeing what would stick. So, did you did you notice that uh that like the zombie pulls a grizzly? You know, you seen grizzly, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So, you know, like grizzly kills a couple women, but then it like throws one up in the rafters like a fucking hit a body like Jason Voorhees or something on the Friday Thursday. <laughs> fucking a zombie does it. That lady gets bit. She's crawling later like this, and then all of a sudden like they go into the fucking house and she's hanging up on the rafters. Yeah, Ow! which basically means basically means the priest zombie bit her and chased her. after her dragged her back uh, uh, hung her up there in hopes that they were going to <laughs> that there was going to be this big shot it's like 
What? <laughs> Why? This zombie's <laughs> motivation is all over the place. Although I will say my favorite performance in the movie is still the kid. I, I love that scene. I think it's I so absurd. So hard. It's so absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. I just have, so, I, I literally, I just, I love that scene. And, and I love Bruno Mattei's like line in there. He's like, yeah, you got to have the media have all the blood guts. You're like, yeah. shout out to Cannibal Holocaust there. Real right. subtle, real subtle. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I, I'm not one. I don't really watch mystery science theater. Like it's not my thing. Right. Because when I grew up, like those are the movies I was like 10 and I was watching those like these are great movies, and they're sitting there making fun of them. I'm like, let's see you make a movie. And right. Then, exactly. you know, but that's just the way to I and so I love this movie, but it is just like one of these ultimate fun movies. Like, like I said, best bad movies. I'd put it here, this one for sure. Spookies is one because yeah. there's a lot of good stuff in spookies, but it's still a mess. Oh, yeah. And maximum overdrive. See, I, I don't know how I'm still kind of bummed out that we never got the chance to see the uncut maximum. Overdrive. You're never gonna. I it's never see gonna that, happen. I want to see that I remember, kid on the steamroller. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> being a kid and reading Fangoria and them talking and showing scenes from Maximum Overdrive that never made it into the film and being so excited about it and then finally sitting down with it going, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, it probably made even less sense. <laughs> like, mm. Uh, I don't want to get into the, the the logistics of maximum overdrive. Right. How come trucks come to life and are controlled, but not cars? <laughs> how come a, a radio like control car comes to life and headphones and and sprinklers that aren't electronic? Whatever, You're right. Dude, oh, whatever. exactly. Who knows? It's like he's he's being chased by a lawnmower. It's like, uh, is that how exactly does that work? <laughs> <laughs> it's literally you. You just have to come to the assumption that the aliens are in space and right. using telekinesis to control whatever they choose. Exactly. That's the only way. <laughs> um, well, how would you compare this to other 1980s movies? Uh, See, it's that's a tall that's a tall order because there were so many absolutely incredible. I mean, not just zombie movies, but horror movies in general in the 80s. That it's like. Just 1980 be, in general, just 80. Oh, in just 1980 in general. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Even so, it's like Hell of the Living Dead is an amazing film, and I'm gonna I'm gonna basically say a different name for it every time I bring it up. But okay. Hell of the Living Dead is an amazing film, but for that time period, I mean, it's hard. It's it's tough to it's tough to really really classify. It's like yes, it's a bad movie, but did it entertain me? 150. percent So. Uh, here, here, here you go. Like just on in comparison, like just let yes. alone other zombie infected movies where Nightmare City came out the same year. Very similar. Which I love. Me. Yeah. yeah. Um, C uh, City of the Living Dead, which is a, is a classic, right? Oh, yeah. Ulchi, mm -hmm. for sure. So there's like a couple zombie movies. And then you have, of course, Cannibal Holocaust, House on the Edge of the Park, Cannibal Apocalypse, as, as far as other Italian movies are concerned, Inferno by Dario Argento. You got Carpenter, The Fog. You got The Changeling. You got The Shining. You got Friday the 13th. So like... You're looking at this cruising, dressed to kill. If you count those as horror films, humanoids right. from the deep, alligator. Like it's like, it never stops. The children. There's uh, Mother's Day. There's there's so many horror movies from this year. And I can tell you right now, as much as I'm sitting here championing Hell of the Living Dead, almost every single movie that you named there is better than Hell of the Living Dead. <laughs> Maybe with the exception Not of. No, I don't know. I, they're probably all technically better movies. Maybe I don't like as much, like some of them as much, but they're all better. Right. But now that being said, I still think that it's an incredibly important film. I think it's Matei's best film. I don't I think he ever made something more watchable than that. Agreed. Um, is it? Should it be a classic? It's a tough call. I, I, again, how can something that can be so? I, I keep using the word incompetent, but how can something so incompetent be so much fun to watch? And I initially saw this movie when I was like 10 to 12, 10, somewhere around that point when I like, you know, became obsessed with the Romero stuff. And I was like, well, I go to the video store. And I was like, anything with zombies was getting rented. And, you know, right. Night of the Zombies was one of the first ones because it was always on the shelf along with Burial Ground and, you know, Gates of Hell and stuff like that. So you right. grab those and they just all kind of form that. And, and so, like, I didn't register how, like, bad, I guess it technically was. I was like, oh, this is a ripoff. But I didn't give a shit because it had zombies and it was crazy and it's just nonstop action. And then it had the downbeat ending, which is very right. much 1980 trope. Like every 1980 movie is dark. Like nobody, nobody walks away in a, you know, there's no Spielberg endings in 1980. Right. I mean, and again, it's one of those things too, where obviously for that time period, it worked. 
because either I have to assume I was a complete moron when I was a kid because I don't recall. <laughs> I recall the movie being ridiculously dubbed. I don't recall saying, God, there's a lot of stock footage in this thing. <laughs> I don't recall. Yeah, I, I just I, and it, it, to watch it now, it's I mean, it couldn't be more obvious that not only is this film have a ton of stock footage, but stock footage that they did not care whether or not it matched or not. Well, back in on VHS, stock footage didn't stick out as bad as it does now. Now right. it sticks out really bad. It's just like, oh, yeah. you'll be watching like, uh, I think even stuff like the uh, Final Countdown, you'll be watching mm -hmm. it and they'll have like fucking World War II stock footage. You're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's 4K. And then I don't know if that's the one, but I've seen a lot of war movies that do that. You know what I mean? Like, don't right, even, right. Don't stock footage in there. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't have too much more to say about Health Living Dead in general, except that I love the ending. Like, that's a great yeah. ending. Go over for the cigarette. Just. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. The ending to me always seemed ridiculously tacked on. But that, again, it made sense with the movie. It's like the rest of the movie seemed tacked on. So why not? Yeah. Like, I, I just imagine Fulci watching Dario Gento like I could do it better. And then. Bruno Mattei watching zombie and be like, fuck Fulci, I can do it better. And right, like exactly. the zombies walking on the bridge, he's like, I got one. I'll do it in the park. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had one um, that I think I watched for 1994. What the fuck was that movie? Was uh, that Land of Death? No, this is 94. Oh, 94. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I wrote a stupid letterbox review of it and like, I can't, it was so dumb. Like, I, I saw like he. And like he, how he came up with the idea to rip this movie off. I think it was called Madness. If, is that possible? I don't think I'm familiar with it. No. Let me look this up. I know it's very stupid of me to just be like, I'm going to look up the Bruno Mattei movie. No, on no. <laughs> but I just have to know what it is now. Cause, right. Because I mean, like every we do these retro years and like every time somebody like Bruno Mattei pops up, it's just like, well, we got to watch the Bruno Mattei movie. It's called Madness. It's from 1994. I'm, I'm pulling it up now, actually, because I am not familiar with this okay. one at all. Um, it's, it's like a huge ripoff of, uh, geez, what, what ripoff was it of? It, it, let me see if I can find the review. I okay, have, here we go. I am not familiar with this one at all. Oh, uh, here, here's my review. Circa, it took, it, the movie was released in 1994, but Circa 1982, Bruno Mattei walks out of a theater. The sun hits him in the face. Bruno squints. He rubs his chin in deep thought. Bruno moves out of the frame. The marquee is now visible. It reads Tenenbrae, circa 1994, <laughs> Madness. It's a ripoff of Tenenbrae. <laughs> nice. I, and just from looking at the images, too, it's pretty obvious that that's exactly what it is, too. That's fantastic. Bruno Mattei's Tenenbrae. Uh, well, but that's the thing. I mean, the guy was a master at that. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know if that's a compliment or, or a put down, but that was... I mean, that was his thing, right up to. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think. The last one. He did zombies. The last. The, zombies I the saw beginning. zombies. The beginning. I saw Island of the Living Dead. Um, There's Land of Doom, but um, some of those like like Shocking Dark and Robo War, you're just like your your fucking jaws on the floor. Like the Robo yeah. the fucking RoboCop Predator ripoff. You're like, oh yeah, are yeah. you on drugs? Like, but that one I watched like three times. It's it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, what what was your thoughts on Rats Night of Terror? Because I know that's highly regarded, and personally, I never got it. I like it, but I don't love it, and I don't rewatch it like Calvin Living Dead. I always thought right. it was, like people hype it up, but it's just like it's okay. And like I, I like um, Goretta Goretta when she's like oh, here, sugar, yeah. and that's like you know because, but like. It's not nearly, and the ending's fucking hilarious. The ending, the ending is, I, I'm still baffled. It's like, did you just d decide, okay, it's time to end this movie. What do we do? You know? I mean, he had just seen Planet of the Apes. Right. <laughs> His ending was just a lift from Planet of the Apes for no reason. Like, I, you, you just assume that they, you know, the rats evolve so much that now they take in the place of the humans, but it's just like, it's just so silly because it, he takes the mask off. Uh, I mean, it's nonsense. Yeah, it's not oh, nearly, absolutely. It didn't work nearly as well for Hell of Living Dead for me. I mean, as, as Hell of Living Dead. I mean, it's more like a Night of Living Dead with the zombies, but it's just doesn't. Right. I don't know. I like zombies. That's my thing. Yeah, same here. I mean, it's one of my favorite genres. Yeah. So. so I should ask you, working with J.R. Bookwalter numerous times and being in Dead Next Door and all that, mm -hmm. is J.R. Bookwalter a fan of Hell of the Living Dead? You know, uh, sadly enough, I don't recall us ever speaking about it. I know he's seen it. 
but I, I have to assume that he's seen it. You know, I'm we're, we're getting together Thursday, so uh, uh, I'm gonna have to bring it up to him. That's all you talk so, about the whole time. Yeah, he's like trying to have a normal conversation. You're like, yeah, but what about Zentaro? <laughs> what the fuck are you? Who's Zentaro? Uh, now I know what was it because I mean, obviously he was a huge Romero yeah, and yeah, yeah. Fulci fan, but uh, again, I, I think a lot of especially filmmakers, I think the uh, or independent filmmakers, I think Bruno Mattei is always their dirty little secret. It's like as a yeah. filmmaker, you can't really condone a lot of the stuff that he did. But but at the same token, it's like he's just so damn enjoyable to watch. I agree. So how would you rate him against the other uh, Italian guys like in his caliber? I mean, is in he in ca- a caliber by himself? I bet Claudio Fergazzo, right? I, I, I've always enjoyed his films more than Claudio Fergazzo. I, I, I know I know everybody loves Troll 2. I just was not a tremendous fan. Um, Claudio Fergazzo has got Night Killer. Have you ever seen that one? I have, and even that was just like, eh, I don't know. It's just not my thing. When's the last time you watched it recently? I bought it when um, uh, Severin put it out. It worked better the, the second time I watched it. Really? I'm going to, because I had never I had never seen it. I bought it just because they had the Texas Chainsaw 3 slipcover, and I'm like, yeah, okay, you got me. I'll, I'll do that. So, I mean, yeah, I think Bruno Mattei um, never beat Hell of Living Dead, to be honest. No, no. I mean, I mean, just looking at his stuff, even, I, I again, I know a lot of fans will be upset about this, but I wasn't even necessarily a fan of Zombie 3. I know he only directed about half of it, but still, it was like, I was just not a fan. Oh, I forgot. I, if we're counting Zombie 3, Zombie 3 is the best. Really? Yeah, I love you're, Zombie You're a big 3. fan. Yeah, I, I mean, just. That one grew on me too, just because it's so insane. Like it is just... completely insane. I, I think my problem with it, and I shouldn't do this because realistically, it, it wasn't going to be. I went into it as a kid thinking, okay, this is the sequel to Zombie. I love Zombie, and then watched it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it was like it's so. Well, you don't so register I think... that the Italian film market's dying. Right, exactly. So, I mean, it's the same way that Della Morte Della More is still technically Demons 5. So it's like, I, who yeah. knows? Yeah, Demons 5, yeah. And, and the sack is Demons 4, and the church is Demons 3. But then there's Demons 3, the ogre, and you're just like, what's happening? Right, exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, I bet you were really disappointed when you watched Zombie 4. And then even more <laughs> disappointed when you watch Zombie 5, Killing Birds. Yeah, I, I mean, my love for those films pretty much ended It's that. I guess technically Zombie 2, Zombie. So. I love Zombie 4, and I watched Zombie 3 and 4, especially 4 as a kid, a bunch of times whenever that's reached. But I didn't watch Zombie 5 for some reason. I was weird like that. Like, I'd watch Zombie 3, one, like, Zombie, Zombie 2, whatever. You guys know, the whole Dawn of the Dead, and then Zombie. But I watch all those, right. and I never watched Zombie 5. I was just like, I don't know. I, so. I think the reason was And then I recently zombie... watched it, and it sucked. Oh, yeah. It, uh, see, that's the thing. I, I think that's one of those things where at least for me, I was the same way because it's like, okay, I already got burned with Zombie 3 uh, three and 4. You got me. And then the title alone, Killing Birds, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to pass. I don't think I'm going to see this. <laughs> I'm gonna, that's a, just like looking at the back, hoping to see something that... There's, is there even zombies in it? I don't I don't recall. I, I mean, it's been a long, like a long time since I did it. finally see it. Because I ended up getting... I did end up... The only reason I even owned it was because... Media Blasters released a three pack. Yeah. And it's like, well, I, I want the other two, so I might as well just grab this. And I sat down with it. It's like, oh, so this is why I didn't watch this for so long. <laughs> so I mean, it's not the worst movie ever made, but it's just, it's the worst zombie movie in the franchise. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could definitely say that. Yeah. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to say about Hell of the Living Dead? No. I mean, realistically, like I said, I, I will say that as much as we've sat here and, both praised it and shit on it. I do think it's a film that horror that all horror fans, no matter what genre you enjoy, should check out. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we shouldn't. I I'm, I again want to bring up the special effects are much better mm-hmm. than anything in Bruno Mattei's other movies. Like the the bites on the neck are really oh effective. yeah. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of death. A lot of people get mm-hmm. killed. There's a decent amount of zombies, especially at the end. Um. So I mean, like yes. they they do that really well. Um. The two lead uh, SWAT guys, like they suck. Yeah. Oh, they're bad. They're, they're real bad. bad. They, and they're so generic. I don't know why they made them look almost identical, except one's like 50 and one's like 30. And it's just like, we'll make these guys the same. It's like, you really need some like variety there. Like you have the two weird guys, but then like, why? Well, my, I guess my concern with it is 
I could never understand who we were supposed to focus on as the leader because you got the older guy and, but and who occasionally will bark order something. And when I, when I first watched it, I'm like, okay, this is, this is our hero. This is who we're yeah. supposed to. And then you got the potential like 20 second uh, romance possibility between yeah. the other guy and the reporter that goes nowhere. I mean, oh. literally goes nowhere. So but it's except, like, okay, so is he who we're supposed to focus on? <laughs> but then Zantaro steals the whole show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, realistically, as much as Zantaro steals the show, there's never a question when you're watching that movie. He's always a supporting character. Oh, yeah. No matter what. Yeah. No doubt. Whereas no doubt. the other two, it's like, okay, whose story is this exactly? Because I'm kind of lost as who I'm supposed to be, uh, who I'm supposed to be focusing on. No doubt. Um, should mention like when they go to the village, they, that stuff is like the is that like just stock footage of people with Ebola or something? Yeah, yeah. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, that's fucking tasteless. Yeah. Well, if I'm not mistaken, most of that footage, and I could be wrong, uh, came from a documentary that Matei was involved with called "The Other Hell," not "The Other Hell." I'm the Other Hell did it? the non exploitation one. The non exploitation one, which I is can't. actually one of his better movies. See, I've never actually sat down with that. I need to. And Zantaro's in that too, I think. Is he really? Yeah. Um, there was some Mondo film that Matei either was involved with as a producer or he um, uh, acquired the footage of. And that's where, from what I understand, most of that stuff came from. And most of it is like, again, I don't understand how a lot, I can understand how that can be released in documentary form. How you can just shove that into a movie? It's like, uh. yeah, it, it's. I mean, I speaking of tastelessness, though, when you look at 1980, it's just like there's a lot of fucked up shit going on in these movies, and the Mondo oh, yeah. movies are, are much worse than anything that's in these. So, well, yeah. one of the biggest. I mean, uh, it's Those funny are that 80, but. it's funny that we're talking specifically about 1980 because um, what was it the other day? Like, I think the uh, the other night I was uh, I had watched a documentary on Shutter about the making of Hannibal Holocaust. Yeah, yeah, I, I watched that too. It's a really mean-spirited documentary. I, I didn't care for it in, in the sense that it was like, you know, let's let's try and pick out all the shittiest things about these people and let's exploit them kind of thing. Yeah, it's a cursed film, so, so I, I don't watch the other ones, but I did watch that one because uh, I, I love Cannibal Holocaust. Right, I'm a big right. fan. And I understand the controversy, but at the same time, like that movie, it, it goes back and forth, like where like this is a genius movie and like these people want to, you know, uh, basically hide it away or, or badmouth it. And then it switches back to these kind of people that do it and back and forth forever. Right. And, and let alone just the idea of its place in history is one of the most interesting horror films ever made. Oh, it's yeah. I mean, I don't condone. talking I'll, about and not hiding. I'll it. be the first to admit, I don't condone some of the things that went on during the filming of that movie, but at the same token, to completely dismiss the film as garbage, it, you can't do that. You just can't. Well, the one thing that I, I think that that actual cursed films tried to paint, like, and, and I mentioned this because we did, I did Cannibal Holocaust with Art Editor. We talked about yeah, it yeah. for 1980. And I, I feel like that documentary tried to paint this, um, and, and that Holocaust Diodato documentary, I don't know which one it was which, I watched them both together, but I feel mm -hmm. like it was the cursed one that they tried to paint, like, and I can see this, and I can see it in the movie and the narrative in the movie coming through it from Diodato is that this guy was, you know, as he was the director, he became more part of the jungle and became like a savage himself. And, and right. the monkey's not enough. Now we do the fucking sea turtle and it just, it's just like engulfing him and him becoming that fucking animal himself in the jungle. Right. Making that movie and just taking it the next step. And like, that was like the peak of what the fuck we can do to shock people. And it just, it's oh, yeah. Just, but I mean, like you can tell, like they're trying to paint the picture of him becoming a monster while making the movie and everything like that. And I'm sure that he put through a lot of those people through hell, you know? Oh, I guarantee it. Yeah. I 100% guarantee it. I just, again, there was, uh, there were some, th my own personal taste. Uh, there were some things in there that were discussed or kind of brought up. Like, uh, like I'll be honest with you, like Roberta Finlay's uh, uh, interview about Robert Kerman. I don't What's know shitty? what their yeah, the, what the, I don't yeah, that's the thing. I no don't know what their history it. is. I mean, if that would have been a guy, dead. I gotta, this is gonna be really shitty to say. But if that was a guy bringing up how a woman looked ugly, they wouldn't have put that oh, in the document. Yeah, they it never would have made it. And if it did, the guy would be. But if I can never work again, guarantee. I, and I, I mean, they, like I, I, I've seen some Roberta Finley movies, and she's always she doesn't like horror movies. Like all her interviews, she says, "I don't even like Night of the Living Dead." She she doesn't right. like horror movies, and, and she's very mm -hmm. blunt. So that she's very funny too. 
Right. So they just throw her in there to talk about stuff like that, which is okay. But at the same time, like, I don't know why you got to badmouth the guy. I mean, yeah. So I, I never heard anything else about the guy like that except from that. Right. Well, and, and again, did, now, did you happen to see there was a documentary um, that, that came? I don't, it, I know it came out in Germany, but I haven't seen it anywhere else. Finding Cannibal um, Holocaust or searching? Uh, in Search of Cannibal Holocaust? That's the, the Callum Weddell doc. Yeah. And it's not Have been you released here yet. No, I want to see it. Um, And he actually goes over there and he himself. And interviews a lot of the people that were in the movie, the actual right. like, and tribes people and stuff. They were actually was, tribes people, yeah. There was a German import that was available that I was going to grab from uh, uh, Diabolic, and it sold out immediately. And I don't think they ever restocked it. And it's like, oh, you know, I really wanted to see it. Hopefully, so, it gets a U.S. release. And he was, uh, you know, the one thing too that was I, this is nitpicky as shit about that uh, Cannibal Holocaust thing. Where one of the guys, uh, like people that were being interviewed, were using three dollar words to talk about the movie, and then they oh, referred yeah. to the turtle as a tortoise. Dio Dotto yeah. did, but that's a translation issue, motherfucker. Right. You know that's not a tortoise. Yeah. <laughs> if they would have killed a tortoise, it wouldn't have been nearly as controversial. Right. Oh, people, exactly. Uh, those sea turtles live a long time. That, that those river turtles and they're mm-hmm. rare. And it's just like, yeah, like that's oh, why exactly. people. And that movie's also punished because it's effective. Like. Cannibal Ferox chops the sea turtle's head, the same type of turtle, similar turtle in that movie, non-ceremoniously, poorly done, just matter-of-factly, and nobody said dick about it. But just no, because of Cannibal Holocaust not. is, on, I, I hate to say this, it's a work of art the way it's made to make you feel horrible. Mm-hmm. It, it gets emotions out of you purposely. You know, that's what causes the issues. Right. Times. And that they did it, but people take notice that they did it because of what it is. Like the other people can just write off the other ones as garbage. Right. But I'm going to address has, has some art to it. I think a lot of art to it. So that upsets people. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to address the elephant in the room. I don't use uh, ear, uh, earbuds. So, so as, as you can turn, you can now turn this, uh, uh, this interview into a drinking game with every time the, the fucking things fall out of my head. I'm so. just actually going <laughs> to cut this instead of a two camera thing here. I mean, I'm just going to have one you and then one oh, perfect. in on your earbuds. So every time it yeah. falls out, every time it falls out, like, like, <gasps> is that, just add just, a sound effect. Just put up like a, uh, uh, what was it? A, uh, uh, student bodies type flash where it's like, Oh, <laughs> drink now or <laughs> uh it's been a while since i watched student bodies i love that movie God, um, what, what that was his name? the breather the breather yeah what, what one of my fa- one of my cherished uh uh possessions is uh uh that what legend films released a blu-ray of that yeah. and uh jekyll and hyde together again yeah. which i also love i think they're available separate now yeah, on kino on but i yeah okay olive yeah after after the legend films had them both together mm-hmm. Right, but but the best line in student bodies, and I still say it. I'm like, we're gonna make horse head bookends. That guy, yeah. <laughs> he's the best character. He's not. He's all funny. He's like, <coughs> we're making horse head bookends. The woodshop teacher is just fucking a, a pervert, obsessed with horse head bookends. My favorite is when he's got when the breather is going up the stairs, and he keeps uh, uh, he keeps getting stuck in gum. He's like, I'd like to kill the kid with the gum. <laughs> That's in the very beginning, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's the opening kill, yeah. Right. Um, so I mean, like, uh, do you have a list of your favorite nineteen eighty four movies? Uh, you know what? I was unprepared, but I can pull something up real quick. Let's see here. I mean, uh, let me let me guess. Some Cannibal Holocaust got to be on there. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, uh, Friday Thirteenth for you, right? Um, I love Friday the Thirteenth. Um, it's weird because I don't watch the original as much as yeah. I used to. My favorite still of the series is Part Six. But uh, uh, believe it or not, yeah. Um, let's see. So we're going 1980. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Well, why don't I do this? This is a ripoff of uh, another show that's better than this, um, and they just list 1980 movie. Well, they'll, they'll they'll do a year, and this is a ripoff. But they'll do a year, and they'll say better or worse. Um, okay, but let's so do it. Hell of the Living Dead, better or worse than Altered States? Uh, better. Yeah, I, n- I never really got into Alter okay. States, to be perfectly honest with you. Better or worse than The Shining? Uh, the Shining's a better movie, but I enjoy Hell of the Living Dead more. Better or worse than Cannibal Holocaust? Uh, Cannibal Holocaust wins every time. Friday 13th? Uh, Friday the 13th would... would pro- uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Friday the... Th- it's a better film, so... Alligator. You know what's funny? I actually... I'm embarrassed to say I watched Alligator for the first time... Uh, yesterday, oddly enough, and I absolutely loved it. I it's thought awesome. it was a complete blast. I thought Robert Forrester was fantastic in it. 
um yeah i i really really had fun with it so i'm that being said it's still gonna be hell of a living dead i, I love the the dialogue is really well done. oh it's Alley. so good like and, and even the scene with cindy lasenick when he's like dropping yeah. off there's like dogs and they're like dogs <laughs> I, I, was like, <laughs> I love the running gag too of uh, Robert Forster's uh, uh, character having uh, being worried about male pattern baldness. I love. I think that's great. And for some reason, throughout the film, because a lot of times he's wearing a red sh- uh, red button down shirt with a uh, black uh, jacket, yeah. he reminds me of Norm Macdonald doing Burt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Alligator's a classic. Uh, the Fog, better or worse than The Fog? Uh, I love The Fog. I think it's very underrated. Uh, I'm okay. I'm gonna say uh, again. This is gonna be probably typical. Uh, better movie, The Fog. What did I enjoy more? Hell of a Living Dead. So, so you gotta just pick one. No caveat. Oh, I gotta pick, okay, if it's if we're going better movie, I'm going. No, which one the do you fog. like better? Oh, Hell of a Living Dead then. Yeah. <laughs> the Changeling. Um, I never got into the Changeling. Was not a fan actually. So I'm going Hell of a Living Dead. Prom night. Never cared for Prom Night either. Uh, Hell of a Living Dead. Maniac. Maniac wins 100%. That's just an absolutely incredible film. Humanoids from the Deep. Humanoids from the Deep, I have a huge soft spot in my heart for. That one's going. I love oh, Humanoids one's from the Deep. That's my favorite mm-hmm. underwater creature feature besides, of course, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Right. Well, I it cra- that movie always cracks me up, too, because Corman made such a big deal about it being a female director and then went then in he and shot a whole yeah. ton of sleazy shit in there. It's like, yeah, that's that's real female empowerment there. You get the best of both worlds because you get that, like, genteel touch that she has. Like, so mm-hmm. it's, like, a really well-made movie with, like, these details and intricate character moments. And then, right. like, you just get the sleazy exploitation. So it's like, this is, like, the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I? I'm, like, stimulated mm-hmm. everywhere. Um Saturn 3. Never cared for... You and I discussed that before. I am not a fan of Saturn 3. It's just a, a genuinely, in my opinion, shitty movie. Cruising. <laughs> oh. uh, you know what? Me personally, I'm still going uh, Hell of a Living Dead. Um, Watcher in the Woods. Never seen it. Surprisingly enough, never sat down with it. Inferno. Ooh, that's a tough one. Hell of a Living Dead. Believe it or not. <laughs> Hell Living Dead's in your top five. Eaten Alive. It, uh, Hell Living Dead. <laughs> I'm going to skip some of these because some of these aren't worth shit. Right. Uh, City of Living Dead. Now, okay, I'm going to preface it this, okay? <clears throat> I love Zombie. I love House, of the, uh, House by the Cemetery. I love The Beyond. City of Living Dead, in my opinion, is just an okay movie. <laughs> so... I'm, I'm going with help. You're ruining all your credentials here. I know I'm ruining. I, I, I love this movie. I told you I, I'm well aware. It's a piece of shit. I just, I love the movie. So this is put in context after you bad mouth the movie so much. This is mm-hmm. how much you love it. So yeah. Terror train. Hell. Night of the demon. Okay. Oh, night of the demon. Bigfoot. S- uh, sadly enough, never seen it. Oh, I was going to buy the Severn one. Never, never, never bought it. You got to see it. It's, it's, ridiculous is it uh, because i've never been a fan of bigfoot films but i've heard such great things about this i need to break down and do it it is so weird um it half the movie's a flashback but then a flashback like the guy's in the hospital bed telling the whole story and then so you're in a flashback and then he starts like the characters around a campfire including the character in the hospital bed and he starts to tell all these bigfoot stories that they flash back to i'm like what the fuck are you doing and at one point this isn't a flashback remind you the guy's wife has a nightmare about her husband being killed by Bigfoot, but it's in his fucking flashback. What the shit? That's like the dog flashback in uh, Hills Have Eyes 2. What it's the even more that? nonsensical. Oh, my God. How do you know what somebody else is streaming? <laughs> <laughs> it's Motel Hell. I love Motel Hell. That's got to that's gotta be, that's got to top it. Yeah. Just do a few more here real quick. Ninth Configuration. Um... I don't recall ever watching it, actually. I, I actually debated about picking up uh, Scream Factory's new uh, Limited, but uh, ninth I just coin, didn't. Uh, coin figuration? Yeah, ninth, co- ninth coin <laughs> figuration. <laughs> That's some fine quality. Con- well, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna bitch about this. And you know what? I'm, I don't know if you'll use this or not. And it's We're probably, using everything. It's, it's probably going to get it's probably going to get my order canceled. Did you see? Uh, they don't um, watch this. They don't yeah, care what they, the fans think. <laughs> 
Did you see their announcement for their release of the 4K um, uh, uh, Army of Darkness? Oh, then they fucked the prices up. Yeah, big time. And I yeah. grabbed one because it's like, they shit, at that, pr- if, if that price, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. <clears throat> they, they canceled the order, which again, I figured, you know what, enough people, there were. if I had to guess that probably a lot of people saw it and ordered 10 of them at that price to, for resale, that's oh, fine. Yeah. But if you fuck up like that, you, you kind of have to do better than say, hey, you know what? Here's a five dollar uh, coupon. Five dollar voucher. Time. It's like, yeah. come on, dude. <laughs> that won't well, even. If I buy one thing, that's not even going to cover the shipping for you guys. So. The, the, I know. I don't want to get off on and bad mouth this company, but the one thing I don't like is that they have access to Corman's fact, uh, Corman's catalog, and then they just take these classic horror movies and make them website exclusives, and they mm-hmm. like thirty dollars with no special features and no free shipping. And right. they're limited. It's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I, 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 because you have to cut off, I cut off the web exclusives. I don't buy them. I rarely buy I, them. If there's something that I really, really need, which is a very rare thing, I will grab one of the website exclusives. Typically, the stuff that they release, if it's limited for me personally, I'm not saying for everybody, for me personally, there's a reason that it's limited. But, but uh, so many other companies know. put that shit out and, and like, I, I, I don't, there, I don't know. A lot of these other companies are just more fan friendly, I guess, in terms of pricing, in terms of what they do. You know what I mean? Right. Like typically they don't do the website exclusives like for a movie that it's just like bare bones release. Like they're literally charging. What was that? Like the tear within for like fucking $30. You're like, which is absurd. It's fucking plus, abs- plus it's $6 insane. shipping. And it's like, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not when you can buy a 4k from vinegar syndrome. And it's like, right. it's got all the bells and whistles on it and features mm-hmm. and, they do a better job with their masters. So does Arrow. I'm sorry. I don't want to be yeah. thick. Occasionally, Screen Factory knocks it out of the park. Their alligator, and that was priced properly, probably because they can move more units. But right. at the same time, they just don't want to print off the unit, units to take a chance. You know, they punish and I the get fans. It. For I not, mean, you know. I, I'm I'm well aware that just make them made well on aware. demand. Then make them made yeah. on demand and just I'm print them when they order for, yeah. for twenty bucks. I do that. I know physical media is dying, but that do, that is an excuse to a be lazy about the releases and b rip off the customer for an absurd amount. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Call them scam factory. <laughs> um, house on the edge of the park. That's a tough one because I have like a love hate relationship with that movie. I respect it. I love David Hess and. Um, uh, I always forget the actor's name. I, God, Giovanni uh, Lamberto Medici. Yeah, um, I, I I think both of them are amazing in that movie. I just personally can't watch it. It's it's a tough view for me. I love it, it's, but yeah, it's fucked up. Hmm. Um, but again, I mean, speaking of companies that do it right, um, Severin did an amazing job oh, yeah. with their uh, with their release on that. Cannibal Apocalypse. <sighs> Campbell Apocalypse. I, I absolutely adore that movie. It's one of my John Saxon too. is so fucking good in that. And it's just such a sleazy movie that it's like, yeah, I, I, I dig those. Um, just, I don't know, and Mother's Day? I, you know what? Mother's Day was one of those movies that I just, I understand the love for it. I just don't particularly care for it. I think it's kind of... I don't know. I just never really cared for it. It's it's fine. I used to feel that way. The last watch, I enjoyed it. I liked it. Finally. Yeah. It finally took like four, three, four times. But fade to black. Um, I love fade to black, but I still would. I still think Hell of the Living Dead is more fun. I, I would watch that much more before I'd watch uh, uh, before I'd watch fade to black. But it's a great movie. Christmas Evil. Never cared for it. Just Ooh. did not care for that movie at all. Uh, I'll do a couple more because there's just uh, Anthropophagus. Um, Anthropophagus is one of those weird movies where there's several scenes in the film that are so incredibly good. And George Eastman is so fucking creepy in that movie, but it literally is such a snail's crawl to get to, I I don't need to see every square inch of this mansion. I I don't need to see, (laughs) like I said, there's so many It works as a travel log though. It, it does to basically make me guarantee I never want to come visit this place. So, <laughs> so hell of a living dead. I'm going with on that. Nightmare city. Na- uh, absolute tie. 
absolute one hundred percent tied. Don't answer the phone. Never cared for it. Surprisingly enough, just I love Nicholas Worth. I just I, I thought the movie was boring. Um, zombie Holocaust. Are we talking Zombie Holocaust or Doctor Butch? Which there's cut? barely a difference. There's like a, a two minute opening in Doctor Butcher. There is, but honestly, for me personally, that too many uh, that two minute difference. And it, now, am I remembering correctly? There's a different soundtrack on that there as might well. Be. I think there? there is actually maybe a possibly okay. different. I really enjoy, um, personally, I really enjoy Zombie Apocalypse. I think the tact on beginning on, which if I'm not mistaken, uh, the guy who directed uh, Document of the Dead directed, didn't he? Right, from Keys, yeah, he did the yeah. opening. Yeah, I didn't, I, I honestly, it just felt too tacked on for me. That being said, I don't know why I'm even babbling about this, because Hell of the Living Dead beats both of them. So. And the last one, um, The Unseen. Uh, Sidney Lassick? Yeah. I don't recall really caring for that movie. I, I, I remember buying it multiple times, but uh, <laughs> but I, I don't recall really, really digging that movie. So, yeah, I'm going with hell on that one. Yeah, it's a crazy year, isn't it? It really is. I mean, there were so and, and it's funny, too, because I'm looking uh, I, I'm looking at some other things that were released that same year, too. Uh, obviously, much, much lower, uh, uh, lower fare, but. It, it, there was some really amazing things that came out that year. Oh, yeah. Now, again, that being said, I just personally think that um, I, again, it's it's a tough question to answer because you've named some really really amazing films, but in almost every case, I would personally rather sit down and watch Hell of the Living Dead. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. So you guys mm -hmm. heard that? Heard it here? Hell Living Dead better than Friday Thirteenth. Cruising, Dress to Kill, <laughs> and The Shining. So now every, everybody that in the 90s that I ever gave a shitty review to your movie, now you can say, why do I care what this asshole thinks? So. That, that's kind of like, I know everybody's like, when Stephen King said this horror movie's great, it's like, guys, did you see his like best horror movie list? Like he had the right. Dawn remake over the original, and then he, yeah. like, so who gives a shit? Not to be rude. I mean, like, not that my tastes are any, I take Stephen King's word over, but at the same time, he's, he's just like all of us. Sometimes right. Oh, opinion. exactly. Yeah. And again, the thing that I've, at least in my old age, what I've discovered is that just because a movie is good, or, or no, like, let me take that back. Just because a movie is well made doesn't necessarily make it a good movie. You know, it's it's all about it's all about nostalgia. It's all about personal preference. Yeah. You know, nostalgia the, and personal life experiences do matter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can sit down and watch a lot of these films and they may be complete pieces of garbage. But if at that point in my life, it meant something to me, I'm going to love the movie. I, I love mean, Neon Maniacs. I'm not yeah, going to tell I love, you it's it's top 10 of 1986, but it, right. might, be, I, I it love, might be in there for me. I love the Robert Altman uh, Popeye movie. You yeah. know, it's like <laughs> I don't think anybody should ever legally say that, but it's true, you know. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate you doing this. Did you have anything you wanted to say before we're out of here about 1980, Hell of Living Dead, about any upcoming stuff? Um, no, essentially, uh, like I said, the uh, I, I, you know I love coming on the show. You know, uh, I'm, I'm always down for it. This was a fun topic for me because, like I said, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the film. Um, and uh, like I said, at this point, we're just still, uh, still uh, trutting along on Trivial and hoping to have it out by the end of the year. Nice. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming on, and I'm glad. I always want to get people that love the movie that come on. Even if I don't like the movie, you always want somebody that loves it because you want to sell, you know, you want the best oh, yeah, exactly for the movie, right? See, see, this is a weird one because, again, it's it's one of those films that we're both acknowledging it's not a well-made movie, but we just absolutely love the film. Yeah, um, it doesn't so. make any sense, but it's great. Right. <laughs> In fact, I'm pro after we get off here, I'm probably going to watch it again. So. <laughs> I, I watched it like I had one of my friends who hadn't seen it like put it on like we watched like three movies and that was the last one of the night <laughs> what were the other two you watched um geez I think we watched Cruisin' and I can't remember the first one Cannibal Apocalypse nice so I mean nice. he got all three, three all three great films he hadn't yeah, seen absolutely. any of them oh he hadn't seen it oh that must have been a blast for him did he did he enjoy them though yeah yeah um the, cool. the one weekend he had to watch New Year's Evil which isn't very good Right. No, no, we talked during the whole movie, but I've seen that a couple times, and that's just the what—that's what you do in New Year's Evil. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, 
He watched Cannibal Holocaust and House on the Edge of the Park back to back. Oh wow. <laughs> He, he had killed himself shortly after that. I don't, I feel kind of responsible. <laughs> I'm just, why didn't you, I was going to say, why didn't you just throw on uh, Requiem for a Dream while you were at yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So like, put Requiem for a Dream and Sallow and. Right. And I put a <laughs> Disney movie on there to real fuck with him. <laughs> well, I'm out of here, all right? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Well, oh, yeah, anytime. I, I, always, uh, always happy to come aboard. For sure.